Hello and welcome to another SignNow API video tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the SignNow API dashboard and what metrics are found there. Let's start by creating a new Sandbox account. Here you'll notice a test app along with client ID, client secret, and basic authorization token. And of course, you can add your own app for testing. Note that you can activate or deactivate your app at any time by pressing the respective button, as well as edit the app's title or delete it permanently. Now let's go over the different sections of the dashboard and find out what they're for. There are two documents in your account by default, one for a single signer and one for two signers. The code examples section contains instructions for sending your first signature request. Every time you select a document from the drop-down menu, the document ID parameter is automatically populated with its respective value. What's more, CURL already contains your email address as well as a default invite message and subject. All you have to do is add your bearer token and correct the recipient's email. Every time an API request is sent, it is automatically saved to the Logs tab of your API dashboard. Each log entry is kept for 30 days. You can filter your logs by app, date, method, URL, or status. Now we'll move on to the Webhooks tab. This tab displays your active event subscriptions. Once a subscription is created, a callback is sent to the specified callback URL every time an event occurs. In this tab, you can find a list of event subscriptions and their details. Finally, the Plan Usage tab of the API dashboard lists your subscription details, including invite logs, monthly statistics, and the number of signature invites available for sending out. In this tab, you can see the number of signature invites you have sent, as well as the total number of invites you're allowed to send according to your subscription plan. The name of your subscription is displayed here. Click the Invoices button to view your billing history. Finally, you have the possibility of generating and downloading a usage report for the selected data range. That's all for now. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.